سورا المریم سورا مریم it is a maka uh, it is a sura which was revealed in maka it has 98 verses and six stanzas 19th by the order of arrangement and 44th by the order of revelation the name is because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was qurfil kitab maryam allah mentions here and narrates the events in the life of hazrat maryam alayhi salam and hazrat isa alayhi salam the time period of revolution is before the migration to abyssinia because we know and we learn from traditions that has a jafar alayhi salam has a jafar and who when he migrated to abyssinia he recited the verses of hazrat of surah maryam as a response as an answer to the question in the court now i will be briefly narrating the whole event how it went about what happened was that when the oppression and the persecution of the muslims by the makka by the people of makka it became too much prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam advised them to migrate to abyssinia it was a christian state and the ruler nigis was a just ruler so in the first migration which was led by hazrat jafar prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam's paternal cousin hazrat ali's brother in the first migration there were 11 men and there were four women among whom was also hazrat usman radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu and his wife prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam's daughter and prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam added that this is the first couple who have migrated in the path of allah after hazrat ibrahim alaihi salam and after this there was a second migration in which there were 83 men and 11 women and this second migration to habsha or abyssinia this came out as a blow for the people of quraish because what happened was that almost every every house was struck by it there was a total panic there was a total chaos someone's daughter someone's son husband brother any one or the other had left abu jahl's brother salma bin hasham three of his paternal cousins abu sufyan's daughter umay habiba son of utba abu huzaifa daughter of suhail bin amr so many of the leaders of the leaders of the tribe of quraish their relatives had migrated so what they did was they arranged a team to go to abyssinia and they went to the court and they told the king that some of the rebels some of our religious rebels they have left makka and they have migrated to your city and then they requested the king that they be handed them over they they may be handed them over so the king as prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has said that he was just and he was fair and nigas he said that he will not decide like that he will call the immigrants and he will talk to them before his decision so the migrated muslims they were called to the court and they were inquired about the allegations the religious allegations of rebellion of the religion of the state were put to them how would they explain hazrat jafar was allah taala who very confidently he stood up and he explained the state of affairs in makka before the prophet of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam how they killed and looted and plundered uh, how they killed and looted and plundered and how they drank and gambled and how they even killed their daughters alive and then he added laqad manna allah that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had mercy on them and allah had been kind on them and allah sent prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam who enlightened them with the light of islam and then very truly he explained some of the teachings of quran which was taught to them by prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the king was impressed and he gave his fair decision in favor of the muslims and let them stay on now the quraish were very upset they thought of another plan the next day they went to the court and they asked the king to ask the muslims what their book or what the teachings of quran and the verses of the quran said about hazrat maryam and hazrat isa alai salam now the muslims were again summoned and they were asked so surah maryam which had been revealed the true verses definitely negated all the false beliefs of the trinity by the christians but this was very difficult 
openly standing in the court and negating all the concepts of the Christians was very difficult. But very courageously, Hazrat Jafar, Razillahu ta'ala, and who stood up again and started reciting the true verses of Surah Maryam. The king was listening to the verses and tears were rolling down as we learn just at the start of the Jews 7, which says, is our Samuel when who, when niggas, he heard all the verses recited or uh, the verses of Surah Maryam being recited. What happened? Tafizu min Then tears were rolling down because he was recognizing the truth. And uh, after Hazrat Jafar, Hazrat Allah Ta'ala who recited and finished, um, Nigus, he picked up a straw and he said, by Allah, Hazrat Isa was not a bit more than that or less than that. And Muslims were then granted permission to stay over. And Quraysh, they were, they were furious and they were disgusted because their plan had failed. And the all events they've been narrated in Bukhari. So now keeping all this background in mind, we will be re uh, reciting the verses, what the uh, verses of Surah Maryam have to tell about the birth of Hazrat Isa alayhi salam and the story of Hazrat Maryam alayhi salam. Qaf ha ya This is a mention of the mercy of your Lord to his servant Zakaria. Which blessing is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioning is what is the acceptance of the supplication of Hazrat Zakaria. As Allah says in verse number two, when he called to his Lord a private supplication. So here we learn that the supplication has to be like what? It does not have to be loud or it has to be highlighted or announced or declared in front of other people. It can be just a private supplication, a private conversation of the bondsman and Allah itself. Now, what was all this about? We've um, already discussed in Surah Al-Ibran that Hazrat Zakaria was the caretaker of Hazrat Maryam. When Hazrat Maryam was residing in Baitul Maqdis, he saw a pious girl. He saw there a pious girl being blessed by the non-seasonal fruits of Jannah. Seeing this miracle, he developed hope and he developed reliance and faith. And immediately there and then he supplicated, as Allah has told us in Verse number 38 of Surah Al Imran, he said, What? Rabbi Habli Miladunka Zuriatan Toyibatan in Nakasamiu Dua. So he did, he made the Dua and he made, we, what we learn is from his supplication and Dua, we will learn the manners of Dua and the reason for the acceptance of Dua. His manner was what? Nidan Hafiya. So I again repeat that we do not need to mention or announce our supplications. They can be just private supplications. And then why was the supplication and how was the supplication answered, accepted and granted? He said, my Lord, indeed, my bones have weakened. He's explaining his state of affairs. And my head has filled up with white. That is, he has grown old. And never have I been in my supplication to you, my Lord, unhappy. And indeed, I fear the successors after me and my wife has been infertile. So give me from yourself an heir who will, who will inherit me and inherit from the family of Yaqub alayhi salam and make him my Lord pleasing to you. How was the supplication answered? Verse number seven, he was told, O Zakaria, indeed, we give you good tidings of a boy whose name will be Yahya. He, we have not assigned to any before this name. He said, my Lord, how will I have a boy when my wife has been infertile and I have reached extreme old age? So why was the exception granted? Exception was granted like how? He was given the good news by an angel that he was being blessed by a boy. And not only was this news given, the detail of the son was given, even with his name. 
the name, the characteristics, the trace of the sun, all was explained. So why was this supplication answered in this miraculous manner by the grace and mercy of Allah? Number one, because it was the supplication of a prophet. Secondly, it was made with a proper manner and in a proper respected manner. And the, above all, Hazrat Zakaria salam, had supplicated with full reliance and with the sure belief that his dua will be heard, will be accepted and will be granted. As he said, There has never been a situation that my, my supplication goes unheard, goes disregarded. It will be heard. So that is, he was sure that his supplication will be heard and granted. Although the conditions of having a child were like next to impossible. He was old, his hair all white, his back all bent, his wife fertile since infertile and barren through all the years married life. And now he making dua for a child, but the dua was made with full faith that it will be granted. He had no doubt about the powers of Allah. So remember, for acceptance of dua, we need to be sure-headed. We need to be clear in the belief and faith of the powers of Allah. And we need to be sure that it will be heard and accepted. Then the prayer will be heard, inshallah. And when he said that, my Lord, how will I have a boy when my life has been, my wife has been barren and I have reached extreme age means what? The state of faith fluctuates the state of belief fluctuates an angel said thus it will be your lord says it is easy for me for i created before you when you were nothing zakaria said my lord make for me a sign he said your sign is that you will not speak to people for three nights being sound so he came out to his people from the prayer chamber and signaled to them to exalt allah in the morning and evening so what was this? That when he had his doubts, he asked for a sign. And the sign came in two forms that Allah said that do not speak or Allah said that you will not be able to speak. So in either he was ordered that in either of the situations, he was ordered, ordered to praise and to exalt Allah himself. And means what? That whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses us with a bounty or with a blessing, we need to be what? We need to remember Allah and we need to do what? We need to exhibit and demonstrate gratitude in the remembrance of Allah and to exalt Allah. So he came out and he ordered the people to do the same. Verse number 12, Allah said, O Yahya, take the scripture with determination. And we gave him judgment while yet a boy and affection from us and purity. And he was fearing of Allah and dutiful to his parents. And he was not a disobedient tyrant. And peace be upon him the day he was born and the day he dies and the day he is raised alive. So this was uh, verse number 12 to 15. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned the traits and manners of Hazrat Yahya alayhi salam. He was a prophet to the people of Bani Israel and he was a maternal cousin of Hazrat Maryam alayhi salam. And he was just a year elder to Hazrat Isa alayhi salam. And he confirmed the prophethood of Hazrat Isa alayhi salam and also supported Hazrat Isa alayhi salam. Verse number 16, and mention in the book, the story of Hazrat Maryam alayhi salam, when she withdrew from her family to a place towards the east. We have gone through this story while in Surah Al-Imran, how Hazrat Maryam alayhi salam's mother, who was called as what? Imra'atu Imran. She had sacrificed and specified her daughter for the purpose of Islam. And then how Maryam alayhi salam, she had resided in the eastern wing of Baytul Maqdas. This was the corner the Christians take as their Qibla because Hazrat Maryam alayhi salam, she resided there. And when she was right, residing there, what did she do? Verse number 17, she took in seclusion from them what? 
بتخذو من دونه حجابا a hijab a veil a screen and then we sent to her an our angel and he represented himself to her as a well proportioned man so now in this verse 17 we learn one very important thing that hazrat maryam alayhi salam took what dunihi hijaba taking a hijab taking a veil what does that mean the order for hijab the order for veil is not just only for the followers of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam but was also an a commandment for the women of the previous believers for the previous uh, followers of the previous prophets also and hazrat maryam alaihi salam taking hijab i can recollect in italy when the resolution of ban hijab the resolution of ban hijab was being uh, forwarded and was being passed in the italian parliament and a christian member of the parliament was asked to sign it he said what when i see the holy mary wearing hijab how do you expect me to sign the ban hijab resolution you must have noticed that all the statues of hazrat maryam which the christians make they in their churches she is wearing a hijab and what happened next when the angel came as a human being she said indeed i seek refuge in the most merciful from you so leave me if you should be fearing of allah he said i am only the messenger of your lord to give you the news of a pure boy was 20 she said how can i have a boy when no man has touched me and i have not been unchaste so in this verse she was what she she was a virgin she being a virgin maiden she was shocked with the news of a son and this was but what an order of allah and what did she do how did she respond to this shocking and this upsetting and this extremely difficult order of allah how did she behave what did she do he said thus it will be your lord says it is easy for me and we will make him a sign to the people and a mercy from us it is a matter already decreed when she got the order and commandment of allah that this was to happen how did she behave how did she react was 22 so she conceived him and she did what she withdrew with him to a remote place she did not to this difficult order of allah to this shocking news from allah so this difficult trial from allah she did not react she did what she did not reject she did not resent she did not refuse nothing of the sort whatsoever total submission total obedience surrendering to the consent of allah content with the orders and will of allah <coughs> but obviously growing through going through the whole trial was extremely difficult facing the opposition of the society was going to be even more cross she finding difficult to face the whole situation to face all those around her she shifted to a far fetched area no hair no see trying to conceal the event she trying to conceal the event and trying to conceal the whole outcome she shifted to a remote place what happened there was 23 and the pains of childbirth drove her to the trunk of a palm tree she said oh i wish i had died before this and this was an oblivion forgot forgotten this is the part where the happening in baitul laham the place where hazrat isa alai salam was birth the happening took place beneath a palm tree her words i wish i had died and i had been forgotten they show what how upset how anxious how tense she was desiring death rather than having to face all the shame and disgrace but still obedience persists 
no complaint, no argument, no refusable, no refusing, no hostilities, no disobedience, no doubts. Just compare, just compare how easily women today go and they get their pregnancies aborted for no cross reason whatsoever, other than the fact that they can't rear more than three children or the gap between the two pregnancies is too little or that she has yet a degree or a thesis to be done or her promotion is due. Just imagine, imagine Hazrat Maryam alayhi salam's situation. A virgin, a maiden with the reputation of being pious, a modest girl from a righteous, respectable family. Her first labor all by herself, no medical help, no medical personnel, no family support, no one to, no one to console, no one to help, no one to guide, care, feed. No sister, no mother, no husband, no friend, no nurse. All by herself, solitary soul with the first delivery. Just imagine. But still, what is there? Total silence, patience, reliance, obedience, subhanAllah. But remember, such patient, obedient, are never left alone. The rule of Allah is what? Inna Allah ma The help of Allah befalls, for sure befalls those who stay patient, who stay obedient, who stay reliant on Allah. This help of Allah sometimes comes early, sometimes comes late. Now, how did Allah help here? He called her, he called her from below her, do not grieve. Allah tahzani, your Lord has provided beneath you a stream. Subhanallah, how did Allah help? An angel by the order of Allah descended and the angel consoled. Allah tahzani, don't be upset, don't be grieved. So there was what? Consolation, a psychological support, which was much needed. This was extended. And what else? A stream, a spring of water. This was most needed to maintain hydration, for washing, for cleaning. She was not left alone. Verse 25, for their help coming and shake towards you, the trunk of the palm tree, it will drop upon you ripe, fresh dates. And then what? Provision of dates. The best source of sugar and glucose, instant energy. You know what we do? Glucose infusion is what is started as IV fluids immediately during labor. So with no one to console, no support, no one to help, to feed, Allah sent all the help, all the support, all the contentment, all the guidance. And then it was said, cool your eyes. Verse number 26, so eat and drink and be contented and cool your eyes. Qurrata aini. Qurrata aini with what? With the stream of water, with the water from this cool spring and also by the sight of your son. And if you see from among humanity anyone, say what? Indeed, I have vowed to the most merciful abstention, so I will not speak today to any man. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala suggested Hazrat Maryam alayhi salam to stay what? To stay quiet. A fast of silence was what? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala suggested to Hazrat Maryam alayhi salam to deal all this situation with. Imagine what the situation is like. A maiden girl being reputed as pious and modest with a well-known respectable family walking back, carrying a newborn baby in her lap. This would obviously, very obviously raise a hue and a cry Lot of queries, criticism, blames, allegations. And all this is shown in the following verses. So to face all this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala advises her to stay quiet. Silence. Does this look like a probable solution to the problem? No. People blaming me, people accusing me, 
putting allegations of immorality, of adultery, and I staying quiet? Why shouldn't I talk? Why shouldn't I explain my position? Why shouldn't I try to tell them the truth? Explain the falsehood of all their accusations. I can talk it out. I can talk them out. Staying quiet, keeping silent does not practically seem the probable solution to the problem. But remember, the orders of Allah, the advices of Allah, no matter, they might not sometimes, because we do not comprehend them with our tiny minds, with our, with our minimal wisdoms, we do not comprehend, but the orders of Allah, the commandments of Allah are full of wisdom, are full of wisdom, and there is always, always blessing in following them. May they seem practical, may they seem adoptable or not adoptable, may they seem very difficult to adopt, but they are always, always the solution and the perfect solution to all the situations we are, we are exposed to. Remember, there are situations in life when no clarifications or giving justifications work out. One can just cannot say anything or undo all that. So silence and patience in those situations will also be the best solution. Remember, sometimes suggestions of the book might seem unpractical, unreasonable, but it is we who cannot comprehend the wisdom behind them. So whatever Allah says, whatever Allah suggests, we need to follow and obey. We need to follow and obey with our eyes closed, even if it doesn't appeal to us, because those who obey will be rewarded. Those who obey will be helped, will be guided, and will be blessed with the support of Allah because of their obedience and reliance. And you can see it for yourself that when Hazrat Maryam salam blindly obeyed Allah and kept silent despite listening to all the criticism, then help, support of Allah came as a miracle. What happened? Let's read. And then she brought to him, she brought him to her people, carrying him. They said, oh, Mariam, you have certainly done the thing unprecedented. Oh, sister of Harun, your father was not a man of evil, nor was your man, mother unchaste. So she pointed to him. They said, how can we speak to him who is in the cradle, a child? The miracle happened. The miracle happened. Hazrat Isa alayhi salam said, the help of Allah came. He said, indeed, I'm the servant of Allah. He has given me the scripture and made me a prophet. And he has made me blessed wherever I am and has enjoined me prayer and zakat as long as I remain alive. So the baby spoke out miraculously and justified the whole situation. This is Allah. You see, trials are always not forever trials end help of allah comes allah does not leave his bondsmen allah does not leave his believers allah helps all those who are patient who are reliant and who are obedient to allah in all situations allahumma ja'alni saburan wa ja'alni shakura here hazrat isa alayhi salam introduced himself and he mentioned that he has been ordered to pray salah and to order zakah. It means that zakat and salah was also ordered to prophets before Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Verse number 32, and he made me dutiful to my mother and he has not made me as a wretched, a wretched tyrant. Talking about Hazrat Yahya Alayhi Salam, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala had mentioned that he was he will be dutiful to his parents. For Hazrat Isa Alayhi Salam, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala mentioned that he will be dutiful to his mother, means that he was, this is a proof itself that he was born as a miracle without a father by the order of Allah. And peace is on me the day I was born and the day I will die and the day I am raised alive. This is Isa alayhi salam, the son of Maryam alayhi salam, the word of truth about which they are in dispute. So just imagine Hazrat Jafar standing in the court, all the Christians with their beliefs, and he boldly and courageously 
reciting all these verses, announcing the negation of the concept of Trinity. It is not befitting for Allah to take a son. Exalted is he when he decrees his affairs. He only says to it be and it is. Isa alayhi salam said, and indeed Allah is my Lord and your Lord. So worship him. That is the straight path. Then the factions differed concerning Isa alayhi salam from among them. So woe to those who disbelieve from the scene of a tremendous day. How clearly they will hear and see the day they come to us, but the wrongdoers today are in a clear error and warn them of the day of regret when the matter will be concluded. And yet they are in a state of heedlessness and they do not believe. Indeed, it is we who will inherit the earth and whoever it is on it. And to us, they will be returned. Verse number 41, and mention in the book, the story of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Indeed, he was a man of truth and a prophet. So from here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is uh, talking about a conversation which took place between Ibrahim alayhi salam and his father. And here Allah is mentioning as uh, the trait of Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam as what? Qana siddiqan nabiyya, truthfulness and honesty. Truthfulness and honesty is, has been mentioned as a trait of all the messengers of Allah, because obviously to convey the messages of Allah to his bondsmen, they had to be truthful and they had to be trustworthy. So now the conversation between the father and the son mentioned when he, who Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam sent to his father, Azar, oh my father, why do you worship that? All the idols being worshipped, he is negating them. Why do you worship that which does not hear and does not see and will not benefit you at all? Oh my father, indeed there has come to me of knowledge that which has not come to you. So follow me, I will guide you to an even path. Oh my father, do not worship shaitan. Indeed shaitan has ever been to the most merciful disobedient. Oh my father, Father, indeed, I fear that there will touch you a punishment from the most merciful, so you would be to shaitan a companion in hellfire. His father said, in full arrogance and obstinacy and stubbornness, have you no desire for my gods, O Ibrahim? If you do not desist, I will surely stone you, so avoid me a prolonged time. Ibrahim alayhi salam said, peace will be upon you. I will ask forgiveness for you. For my Lord, indeed, he is ever gracious to me. I will leave you and all those who invoke other than Allah and will invoke my Lord. I expect that I will not be in invocation to my Lord unhappy. So remember what happened that when Hazrat Ibrahim, alayhi salam, he stood steadfastly on Tawheed. And he sacrificed all his beloved worldly possessions and belongings and left all his near and dear ones to stay, to stay and stick to the concept and faith of oneness of Allah. Then what happened? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewarded him here and hereafter. A great lesson for all who stick for Tawheed. So what when he's Took up for Tawheed, what happened? So when he had left them and those who worship other than Allah, we gave him Ishaq and we gave him Yaqub and each of them we made a prophet and we gave them of our mercy and we made for them a repetition of high honor and mentioned in the book Musa alayhi salam, indeed he was chosen and he was a messenger and a prophet and we called him from the side of the mount at his right and brought him near, confined to him and we gave him out of our mercy his brother Harun as a prophet and mentioned in the book Ismail alayhi salam he was what true to his promise and he was a messenger and a prophet and he used to enjoin on his people prayer and zakat and was to his lord pleasing so remember Enjoining prayer and salah and zakat to his people shows what? That salah and zakat was also enjoined to the previous prophets. 
verse 56, and mentioned in the book Idris. Also here, uh, here I would also explain that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enjoined Hazrat Ismail alayhi salam to order all those around himself, to order his family members also to offer salah and to offer and to pay zakat. So this has a very important message. Hazrat Ismail alayhi salam, Zabiullah, who was sacrificed, who agreed to be sacrificed on the path of and the order of Allah, and who constructed Baytullah. He needed to remind, he needed to order his family about salah and zakat. Then where do we stand? We need to do the same very religiously and very meticulously and very carefully and sensitively to remind our family and remind our all those around us of salah and zakah. Rabbi ja'alli maqima salati wa min suriyati. And mentioned in the book about Hazrat Idris alayhi salam, indeed, he was a man of truth and prophethood. Hazrat Idris alayhi salam was a messenger of Allah. And uh, most traditions, they support that his period was between Hazrat Adam alayhi salam and Hazrat Nuh alayhi salam. He was one of the descendants of Hazrat Adam alayhi salam. Verse number 51 says about Hazrat Idris that we raised him to a high station. What does this mean? Prophet sallam explained regarding Hazrat Idris alayhi salam that an angel was sent to Hazrat Idris alayhi salam who told him that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised that each day of his remaining life, whose life? Hazrat Idris's life, each day of his remaining life, by the order of Allah, he will be blessed with the reward of the good deeds all the people living on the earth would do daily. So obviously, very obviously, he got desirous of prolonging his life so that he will be able to gather a greater reward in his worldly life. He had an angel who was his friend. So he came to his friend angel and he requested his angel friend to ask the death angel to delay his death. The friend angel took him with him till they reached the fourth heaven. And there they met the death angel who was descended from, descending from above. The friend angel uh, requested the death angel to postpone Hazrat Idris's death and prolong his life. Now, the death angel, when he was asked and he was requested this by the friend angel, the death angel asked him, where is Hazrat Idris? The friend angel told him that he was under his wings. Oh, the death angel commented, oh, I see. That is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered me to go and present death to Hazrat Idris alayhi salam on the fourth heaven. And I was wondering, the Hazrat Idris alayhi salam was on the land. And how could I do that on the fourth heaven? This is life. Remember, this is life and this is death person walks to the time and place of death which is written which is fixed by the lord allahumma aini ala ghamaratil maut wa sakaratil maut those were the ones upon whom allah bestowed flavors favors from among the prophets of descendants of adam alayhi salam and of those who we carried in the ship with Nu, and of those descendants of Ibrahim alayhi salam and Israel alayhi salam and of those whom we guided and we chose. When the verses of most merciful were recited to them, they fell in prostration and weeping, but there came after them successors who neglected prayers and pursued desires. So they are going to meet evil. Who is going to meet evil? Who pursue the desires and who neglect their prayers. And moreover, we also learn that people who pursue desires, it will lead to neglection of prayers. And how are prayers neglected? Allah is using the word azaru salat. They neglected their prayers. Neglecting their prayer means what? They neglected answering the proclamation of salah. 
reciting the darood after the proclamation of salah, performing ablution meticulously is meaning what is azaw salat, not wearing the proper dress code of salah, not concentrating while we are reciting the words of salah, and then not ignoring and neglecting the sunnahs of the Prophet Salah, sticking to the training of Salah, not fulfilling the promises of Salah, not relating or ignoring the pledges we've made during Salah, or neglecting Salah is not just neglecting our own Salah, but just forgetting the Salah of those all around us. Except those who repent, Allahumma ja'alni min al-tawwabina wa ja'alni min al-mutatakhirin. Astaghfirullah rabbi min kulli zambin wa atubu alayk. Allahumma innaka afuvan kareemun tuhibbu al-affa fa'fu anna. Except those who repent, believe and do right their deeds, but those, those will enter Jannah and will not be wronged at all. Therein are gardens of perpetual residence, which the most merciful has promised his servants and unseen. Indeed, his promises has ever been coming. They will not hear therein any ill speech, only greetings of peace, and they will have their provisions therein morning and afternoon. Verse 63, that is paradise, which we give as inheritance to those of our servants who were fearing of Allah. Allahumma aati nafsi taqwaha, Allahumma inni as'aluka al-huda wa tuqa wal afafa wal ghina. Jibrail alayhi salam said, and we angels descend not except by the orders of your Lord. To him belongs that before us and that behind us and what is in between. And never is your Lord forgetful, Lord of the heavens and the earth and whatever is between them. So worship him and have patience for his worships. Do you know of any similarity to him? And the disbelievers say, when I have died, am I going to be brought forth alive? Does man not remember that we created him before while he was nothing? So by your Lord, we will surely gather them and the devils and we will bring to them to be present around hell upon their knees. Then we will surely extract from every sect those of them who were worst against the most merciful in insolence. Then surely it is we who are most knowing of those most worthy of burning therein, and there is none of you except he will come to it. This is upon your Lord and inevitably decreed. Then we will save those who feared Allah and leave the wrongdoings within it on their knees. And when others, when our verses are recited to them as clear evidences, those who disbelieve say to those who believe, which of our law of of uh, which of our two parties is best in position and best in association? How many a generations have we destroyed before them who were better in positions and outward appearances? Say, whoever is in error, let the most merciful extend for him an extension in wealth and time until when they see that which they were promised, either punishment in this world or the hour of resurrection. They will come to know who is the worst in position and weaker in soldiers. And Allah increases those who are guided in guidance and the enduring good deeds are better to your Lord for reward and better for recourse. Then have you seen he who believed in our verses and said, I will surely be given wealth and children in the next life. Has he looked into the unseen or has he taken from the most merciful a promise? No, we will record what he says and extend for him the punishment extensively and we will inherit him in what inherit him in what he mentions and he will come to us alone. And they have taken besides Allah false deities and that they will be for them a source of honor. No, those gods will deny their worships of them and will be against them opponents on the day of judgment. Do you not see? We have sent the devils upon the disbelievers, inciting them to evil with constant incitement. So be not impatient over them. We will only count out to them 
a limited number. On the day, we will gather the right ears to the most merciful as a delegation and will drive the criminals to hell in thirst. None will have the power of intercession except he who had taken from the most merciful a covenant. And they say, the most merciful has taken for him a son you have done an atrocious thing and the heavens almost rupture their form and the earth split open and the mountains collapse in devastation that they attribute to the most merciful a son and it is not appropriate for the most merciful that he should take a son. There is no one in the heavens and earth, but he comes to the most merciful as a servant. He has enumerated them and counted them of full counting. And all of them are coming to them on the day of res resurrection alone. Indeed, those who have believed and done righteous deeds, the most merciful will appoint for them affection. So... We have only made Quran easy in Arabic language that you may give good tidings thereby to the righteous and warn thereby hostile people and how many we destroyed before them of generations. Do you perceive of them anyone or hear from them a sound? Allahumma ghfir lana walil mu'minina wal mu'minat wal muslimina wal muslimat. اللهم ألف بين قلوبهم وأصلح ذات بينهم وانصرهم على عدوبك وعدوبهم اللهم لعن القفرة الذين يصدون عن سبيلك ويقذبون رسلك ويقاتلون أولياءك اللهم قالف بين قلمتهم والزلزل أقدامهم وأنزل بهم بأسق الذي لا تردوه أن القوم المجرمين سورة طاحة This surah was revealed in Mecca. It has 135 verses and 8 stanzas. 20th by the order of arrangement and 45th by the order of revolution. The name of the surah starts because of the starting alphabets, Tawha. Time period of revolution of the surah is slightly before or after the migration to Abyssinia, but definitely it is before the acceptance of Islam by Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala and who. Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, before embracing Islam, he took a great dislike to Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Twice did he listen to the recitation of Quran from Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself, but he had failed to accept Islam. One day, Nauzubillah, he had planned to assassinate Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he was carrying a sword and was going towards the house of Arkham, that a person stopped him on his way and asked him about his intentions. Very honestly, he told him his plans. So the person suggested that before carrying on what he was wanting to do, he should need to check up the condition of his own family. Now, this was pointing towards whom? His sister, Hazrat Fatima bin Khattab, anha, and her husband, Hazrat Said bin Zaid, radiallahu ta'ala, and they were the lucky couple who had both accepted Islam. And uh, Hazrat Said bin Zaid, radiallahu ta'ala, who was the son of Hazrat Zaid bin Amr Nufail, radiallahu ta'ala, who his father, uh, Hazrat Zaid bin Amr Nufail, radiallahu ta'ala, who before the prophethood of Prophet, وسلم, he was a very pious person. And he, in the desire of finding the right path and the light of Islam, he had traveled out of Mecca, where he met a priest who told him that prophethood of Prophet ﷺ was going to be in Mecca. And so he returned. But on his way back, the caravan was stopped and looted, and he was injured. And before he passed away, he supplicated to Allah, Raising his hands, looking upon the sky, he raised his hand and he supplicated to Allah that I could not meet and I was deprived and I could not meet the last Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala bless my son with Iman on the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. 
this was the supplication ma made by a person who had been oppressed, by a person who was a traveler for the path of Jannah. And it was above all a supplication by the father. So it was accepted. And there, Hazrat Sayyid bin Zayd radiallahu ta'ala anhu was one of the pioneers to accept Islam. So this couple, by the grace of Allah, was lucky to have been a pioneer towards Islam. Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, when he heard about that, he changed his direction, he reached his sister's house, and there he was standing outside and he heard the voices of recitation of Quran and he was furious. He banged at the door in frenzy and the sister recognized that who was at the door. So she quickly hit the Quran and he also asked both of them, they asked as a Khubayb bin Art anhu, who was teaching them the verses to hide also. And uh, Hazrat Sayyid Razialahu Ta'ala Anu opened the door and Hazrat Umar Razialahu Ta'ala Anu aggressively asked them what they were doing. But they kept silent initially. And he was even more furious and he started beating and he started violently hitting Hazrat Sayyid bin Zayd Razialahu Ta'ala Anu. And uh, Hazrat Fatima Razialahu Ta'ala Anha, she intervened to save her husband, but he pushed her away and she fell down and she injured her forehead and it started bleeding. The sight of the blood trickling down the forehead of his sister, this softened his heart. And the final blow was when Hazrat Fatima, she stood up very boldly and very courageously and said, look, Umar, if you are the son of Khattab, then I am also the daughter of Khattab. Yes, we have accepted Islam. Do whatever you can. So this was it. The final blow, the sacrifice, the spirit, the courage, the bold, aggressive declaration of faith all did the job. He was, he was greatly moved and he was greatly impressed. So he humbly requested that he should be allowed to listen to the Quran also. But uh, since the words, La yamassuhu illa al had been revealed here, so the sister um, instructed him to purify himself before he listened to the Quran. And he took a bath and he listened to the verses of Surah Taha and telling them that uh, he was going to embrace Islam. He left their house and he walked to the house of our com companions, saw him coming, and they informed Prophet Sallallahu And Prophet Sallallahu asked them to open the door because he had been praying for the conversion of Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And they let Umar radiallahu ta'ala in and uh, he fell on his knees and he requested Prophet Sallallahu to accept him to Islam. And that day, the Muslims rejoiced and Allah Akbar was heard in the city of Makkah. So this was an incident which took place because Hazrat Umar, who, he had heard the verses of Surah Tawha. So today we shall read the Surah, which led to the conversion of one of the greatest companions of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The basic topic of the surah, or the summary of the surah is that Allah has narrated a part of the events of uh, the life of Hazrat Musa and uh, uh, we have gone through quite a few events, but here we will be uh, going through the events also. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Taha. We have not sent down to you the Quran that you be distressed, but only as a reminder for those who fear Allah. So Quran is a reminder, not for all, but only for those who are God-fearing, who have piety and who are pious. Allahumma ja'alna minhum. Allahumma aati nafsi taqwaha. A revelation from he who created the earth and the highest heavens, the most merciful, who is above the throne established. To him belongs what is in the heavens and what is on the earth and what is between them and what is under the soil. And if you speak aloud, then indeed he knows the secret and what is even more hidden. Allah, there is no deity except him. To him belongs the best names." the best names of Allah. There are 99 names of the attributes of Allah. And we learn from the traditions that whoever will memorize them will enter Jannah. And has the story of Musa reached you? 
when he saw a fire and said to his family, stay here. Indeed, I have perceived a fire. Perhaps I bring you a torch or find at the fire some guidance. Now, if we revise the earlier events, Umm Musa, the mother of um, uh, Musa alayhi salam, after feeding and after lactating, placed him in a wooden box and he reached the Pharaoh's palace where he was raised, where he got exposed to the worldly knowledge and skills of leadership. Now, he grew up in Egypt, but then he committed an accidental murder and he left Egypt and came, came over to Madian. Here he met Prophet Shoaib and he stayed there with them for about eight years. And there he was rearing his sheep as he had promised. And at completion of the decided period, he got married to his daughter and then he decided to shift back to Egypt, his homeland and his birthplace. Because we know that attraction and attachment of the homeland is, is there always. Now, during the journey with his family back to Egypt, he was passing through a desert during the night when he saw this fire and uh, there was light far away. Now, realizing his duty towards his family, he decided to go himself. If you think over, if it had been the husband of today, he might have just ordered his wife or his children to get the light or to find out what all that about and um, he would have given excuse that he is tired. But remember to arrange, to fend, to fetch, and to take care is the duty of the head of the family. And in a family, everyone needs to fulfill their duties with the right of uh, what all the duties, which are the rights of others. Verse number 11, and when he came to it, came to it what? Came to the light which he was seeing, he was called out, O Musa alayhi salam, indeed, I am your Lord, so remove your sandals. Indeed, you are in the sacred valley of Tuwa. So he was called out when he reached close to the source of light, which was being emitted. It was from a berry tree. And taking off the shoes was in what? In respect. Verse number 13, I have chosen you, so listen to what is revealed to you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala conversed with Hazrat Musa alayhi salam and he was told that he was chosen for what? For prophethood. And being the chosen one, what was he ordered? To listen carefully to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him. So the message for all of us is what? Those Allah chooses should do what? They should carefully and attentively listen to his commandments. Just like whom? Just like, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, all of us, we have been chosen by the grace of Allah to go through the journey of Quran. So we need to be what? We need to be attentive while the messages of Quran are being read and are being explained to all of us. Another important thing which I want to point out here is that before choosing Hazrat Musa alayhi salam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala passed him through a series of trials and situations, altering and shifting his environment from one to other. Like initially, he was in the lap of his mother to establish lactation for his physical strength and love and affection for his emotional strength. Then he stayed in the palace where he received the love of Hazrat Asiya to learn to be loving and kind. Then in the palace of the Pharaoh, he was exposed to the worldly knowledge and the skills of leadership. Then in Madian, under training of Hazrat Shoaib for his religious knowledge and training as a believer. So Allah all wise, Allah all knowing, all seeing, all hearing, what does he do? He very swiftly and smoothly kept on shifting in an unfelt manner from one condition to the other. And when finally he had been perfected in all affairs, then he was chosen. We learn this rule of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even when we were going through the story of Hazrat Yusuf alayhi salam. And we all know it was similar for Prophet also. 
So remember, whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decides to choose a person, he subjects him to trials. He subjects him to trials and hardships. Why? To refine, to grind, to polish him. Just like a diamond is cut and then it starts shining. Gold, it is melted, it is heated to be purified. So this is a rule of Allah. Verse number 14, indeed, I am Allah. There is no deity except me. So worship me and establish prayer for my remembrance. So in these next few verses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is explaining the first message which was given to Hazrat Musa alayhi salam. Indeed, the hour is coming. I almost conceal it so that every soul may be recompensed according to that what it strives. So do not let one avert you from it who does not believe in it and follows his desires for you then will perish. And what is that is in your right hand, O Musa? So here in the verse number 14 to 16, Allah has explained the first few messages and commandments or orders given to Hazrat Musa alayhi salam in his first meeting. Summing them, he was introduced to the concept or belief in oneness of Allah, worship one and only one Allah, establish salah or Allah's remembrance, believe in the life of hereafter and uh, future is unknown and refraining from pursuing evil desires and evil doers. After giving this first message, Allah asked him that what was in his hand. And then he replied, he said, it is my staff. It was his stick, his asa. I lean upon it. I bring down leaves from my sheep and I have therein other uses. After a baseline commandment, now there is a dialogue between Allah and Hazrat Musa alayhi salam, Kalimullah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked him and Hazrat Musa alayhi salam replied. He could have just briefly answered that it is my stick. But in his meeting, Hazrat Musa alayhi salam is trying to prolong his conversation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember, our meeting with Allah is what? Is our salah. As Allah says in Surah Al-Baqarah, that the salah is what? Allazina yuzunnuna annahum mulaqu rabbahum. The salah is our meeting with our creator, our sustainer. And Hazrat Umar used to say, when I feel like talking to my Rabb, I offer salah. And when I want that my Rabb talks to me, I read the Quran. So in Salah, we meet our Allah and we converse with our Rabb, pouring out our heartful issues to him. So like Hazrat Musa alayhi salam, we should try to prolong our meeting with our creator, sustainer, that is the meeting of Salah. Allah said, throw it down, O Musa. So here you are. And he did what? So he threw it down and thereupon it was a snake moving swiftly. Now in verse number 19, despite the fact that Hazrat Musa alayhi salam had explained how useful his stick was to him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered him to throw it away. Something so dear, so useful, so vital to him is being ordered to leave it. It was a don't of Allah. What was, what was the behavior of Hazrat Musa alayhi salam? فَأَلْقَاهَا He threw it away without any delay, any postponement, any questioning or debate. This is what? سَمِعْنَا وَأَطْوَعْنَا We will listen and we will obey. This is exactly how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told in Surah Baqarah, Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam would behave also. Is qala lahu rabbuhu aslim, qala aslam tu li rabbil alameen. When he was told to obey, immediately without, without any delay, postponement, questioning or debate, he would say aslam tu, he would obey. So message for all of us is what? By the grace of Allah, all those who have been chosen to read the Quran, 
when we learn a don't of Quran, a la of Quran, this is how we need to react and respond. For example, giving you an example, just imagine if we have a wardrobe full of designer dresses, all trendy and latest and smart outfits, but all not fitting on the merit of Labasu Taqwa, the dress of piety as taught in Quran. And we read the verses of Surah Nur and Surah Ahzab where we read, Wala tabarrujna tabarrujul jahiliyatil ula. Or we read what Allah says in Surah Ahzab, Wala yubdina zina tahunna illa ma zuhara minha. That don't show your adornments, don't exhibit, don't demonstrate, don't go about showing and demonstrating and making yourself prominent and beautiful and attractive and catchy. Don'ts for exhibition for all forms of adornments and dress and jewelry. What are we supposed to do with our favorite dresses we are fond of? All the expensive dresses hanging in our closets. We need to do what? Samirna wa atwana. Without any hesitation, without being double-minded, without any confusion, without any delay or postponement, without any cross-questioning, leave, stop wearing all the garments which do not come up to the merit of libasu taqwa. And for which there is a law and a don't of Quran, however difficult or impossible it may seem. Verse number 21. When the stick changed in a snake, then Allah ordered. Allah said, seize it and fear not. We will return it to its former condition. So the stick became a swiftly moving snake and Allah ordered, Khuzha, get hold of it, grip it, seize it. And Allah said, Wala takhaf, and don't, just don't fear it. And Allah promised, Sanu'iduha, that we will return it to its former condition. This was a command of Allah. This was a do of Allah to hold the snake without any fear. And with this, there was a promise to make it a stick again. Obedient prophet did what? Samirna wa atwana. Is qala lahu rabbuhu aslim aslam tu li rabbil alameen. Despite the fear of the snake, it's poison, a painful death. He did as he was ordered to obey the do's of Allah and to rely on the promises of Allah is the manner of the obedient followers. Now, did he suffer any loss? Did he suffer any loss after such a spontaneous and a total obedience? He suffered no loss, no harm. The protection, the support of Allah helped him and supported him. What lesson do we learn? When we read a do of Quran, a commandment of Allah, we should without any doubt, any confusion, any refusal, any delay, obey the commandment of our Lord. For example, when we read Surah Nur and Ahzab, inshallah, and Allah orders all of us, that O Muslim women, when you go about in your houses in front of all other than your husbands, do what? All your headdresses, use your headdresses to cover your chests and your bosoms and your breasts. And then do what? Then when you go outdoors, when you leave your homes to conceal your adornments, which you were already, I've mentioned, that don't go about exhibiting your adornments, then to conceal your adornments, do what? Cover your faces, cover yourselves with big jilbabs and hang them over your faces as whales. That what do we need to do? What should we do? What do we need to do? Adopt, adopt the order and dress without any debate or discussion completely, despite the fact that we might face opposition and criticism from our family, from our friends, despite the fact that it may be a social setback for us, despite the fact that it might be a hurdle in finding a job, a deterrent for our promotion, but obeying the order of Allah, whatever, wherever, whichever, at all the cost is what we learn from here. 
ربنا إننا سمعنا ربنا إننا سمعنا ربنا إننا آمنا فاغفر لنا زنوبنا وقنا عذاب النار Verse number 22, and draw in your hand to your side. It will come out white without disease. This was another sign. This was a miracle which was given to Hazrat Musa alayhi salam. His hand would come out shining, brilliant white, and there was no disease like albinism or vitiligo or leprosy or whatsoever. They, that, we might, that we may show you some of our greatest signs. Verse number 24, go to Pharaoh. Indeed, he has transgressed. So giving him some basic orders and two miracles, he was ordered to go and invite Pharaoh. Verse number 25, Musa Islam said, My Lord, expand for me my breast with assurance. Now from here, verse number 25 to 23 is the supplication of Hazrat Musa Islam. And uh, because well, why? It was difficult. It was obviously extremely difficult to stand up against the king and king of the superpower of the period. And... Uh, obviously condemning his religion and inviting him towards Islam, this was extremely difficult. So behavior of Hazrat Musa alayhi salam, when in a difficult period or when in a hardship, what did he do? He made dua and he supplicated to Allah. So that, so that is what we learn that when we are in a difficult situation, in a crisis, in a hardship, we need to do what? We need to return to Allah and we need to supplicate from our sustainer. And what was the dua that he said, expand for me my breast with assurance. That is why he asked why, because he wanted that there should be no hesitation and there should be no inhibition in doing the task. And make it easy for me, that is, make it doable for me. And untie the knot from my, from my tongue so that it might come easily to me. I might find it very easy to narrate, to relate, and to explain the message of Allah and the commandments of Allah and introduce to Islam. And they may understand my speech and appoint for me a minister for my family, Harun, my brother. Because you know, the task of inviting towards Allah is, is immense and it is difficult. And it is difficult, especially if the person is all by himself. A single person is alone. When they are two, they become like 12. And if they're one plus one plus one, they might become as strong as 111. So he asked for help and support and Hazrat Musa of um, Hazrat Harun salam, to be made his wife. Increase through him my strength and let him share my task that we, me, that we may exalt you much and remember you much. Indeed, you are of us ever seeing. Allah said, you have been granted your request, O Musa, and we had already conferred favor upon you another time. And the first was when we inspired to your mother what we inspired. So Hazrat uh, Harun salam, was also blessed with prophethood and he was made his wife. And uh, here Allah has mentioned that this was his second favor on Hazrat Musa salam, And the first favor was when he had inspired his mother. And when had Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inspired his mother was which he explains in verse 39 saying, cast him into the chest, which chest? The wooden chest, a wooden box and cast it into the river. Cast what into the river? The wooden chest with the baby in the river and the river will throw it onto the bank and they will take him an enemy to me, an enemy to him. And I bestowed upon you love from me that you would be brought up under my eye. When did all this happen? This happened when the Pharaoh had a dream that a person from the slaves of Bani Israel would revolt and dethrone him. So he consulted his counselors and the counselors suggested that he should order that all the baby boys of Bani Israel should be killed and the baby girls be let alive. 
as Allah has mentioned in Surah Al-Baqarah, يَقْتُلُونَ أَبْنَاءَكُمْ وَيَسْتَحْيُونَ نِسَاءَكُمْ وَفِي ذَلِكُمْ بَلَاءٌ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ عَزِيمٌ So when Hazrat Musa a.s. was born to Umm Musa, she was scared. She was scared that the brutal soldiers, they will walk in anytime and they will snatch her baby and kill her baby in front of her. And it was then that Hazrat Musa's mother was inspired by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to do all this as has been mentioned in the verse. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also promised Umm Musa that he will reunite the mother and the son. Now, this order of putting the baby in a wooden box and placing the wooden box in the river to let it flow on the wild on the wild river this was extremely difficult it was difficult for the mother to do so and secondly it did not look like a practical solution it it looked like just she was she was throwing the baby to the river herself like drowning the baby herself but remember what I pointed out in Surah Maryam also, that even if the order of Allah seems difficult and very difficult to adopt, or does not look like the solution to the problems, but the faith that Allah's orders are full of wisdom, with this faith, when one obeys, the person gets the reward and also the help and support of Allah. So this is exactly what happened. Verse number 40, and we favored you when your sister went and said, shall I direct you to someone who will be responsible for him? So we restored you to your mother and she might be content and not grieve. And you killed someone, but we saved you from retaliation and tried you with a severe trial. And you remained some years among the people of Madian. And then you came here at the decreed time, O Musa. So in Surah Taha, this is an event which is explained briefly, but in a greater detail, inshallah, we will talk about in Surah Shu'ara and Qasas that how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the situations to reunite the mother with her baby as he had promised. But one thing we definitely learn from here that Allah, when promises something, what does he do? As Allah mentions in Quran, Waman Alpha bi ahdihi min Allah, who is more fulfilling of his promises and oaths as Allah. In Allah la yukhliful mi'ad, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not break his promises. So the promise was fulfilled, and inshallah, we will be talking about it in Surah Al Qasas and Surah Al Shahra. Verse number 41, and I produced you for myself, just as I explained before also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, passed his Musa alayhi salam through different situations and he prepared him for himself and then chose him for prophethood. Verse number 42, go you and your brother with my signs and do not slacken in my remembrance. Remember those who invite towards Allah should be in the habit of remembering Allah. Rabbi a'inni ala zikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadatik. Go both of you to Pharaoh. Indeed, he has transgressed and speak to him with a gentle speech that perhaps he might be reminded of fear Allah. So this is a manner of inviting people towards Allah with gentle speech. They said, O oh Lord, indeed, we are afraid that he will hasten punishment against us or that he will transgress. Allah said, fear not, indeed, I am with both. With both of you, I hear and see. So go to him and say, indeed, we are the messengers of your Lord. So send with us the children of Israel and do not torment them. We have come to you with a sign from, our Lord, from your Lord and peace will be upon you. <coughs> and peace will be upon he who follows the guidance. Indeed, it has been revealed to us that the punishment will be upon whoever denies and turns away. Verse number 49, Pharaoh said, So who is the Lord of you too, O Musa? 
Musa Islam said, our Lord is he who gave each thing its form and then guided it. Pharaoh said, then what is the case of the former generations? So this is all the dialogue between Pharaoh and Hazrat Musa Islam. And here, when he asked that what was the case of the former generations, then Hazrat Musa Islam, he did not want to offend Pharaoh. And he wanted to stay at the right side. And he did not want to offend him by calling his ancestors sinful. So very carefully and tactfully and wisely, and yet politely also, he gave a very balanced answer. And uh, at the same time, he also introduced um, said, the knowledge thereof is with my Lord in a record, my Lord neither errs nor forgets. It is he who has made for you the earth as a bed spread out and inserted therein for you roadways and sent down from the sky rain and produced thereby categories of various plants, eat their form and pasture your livestock. Indeed, in that are signs for those of intelligence. From the earth we created you and into it we will return you and from it we will extract you another time. And we certainly showed Pharaoh our signs, all of them, but he denied and refused. This was what? Out of sheer arrogance and stubbornness and obstinacy and love of this world, love of his rule and his power and his authority did he refuse. Verse number 57, he said, have you come to us to drive us out of our land with your magic, O Musa? So, why did Pharaoh say this? Because firstly, because he had a dream and he knew that a person from the Bani Israel will dethrone him. And moreover, it is a natural human instinct that one does get insecure and gets possessive about the, th the things the person loves. So uh, those who love the worldly life and it is their first priority. Obviously, they are very possessive about it. So that is why Pharaoh also got insecure about his, um, about his rule. Verse number 59. Then he said, what? Then he said, then we will surely bring you magic like it. So make between us and you an appointment which we will not fail to keep. Neither you will, uh, neither will you in a place assigned. Verse number 59, Musa Islam said, your app appointment is on the day of the festival when people assemble at the mid-morning. So Pharaoh went away, put together his plan, and then came to Musa Islam. Now, what happened here is that when to convince Pharaoh, Hazrat Musa Islam showed him the two miracles. They labeled him as a magician. So after consulting his counselors, Pharaoh, he decided that to prove the falsehood of Hazrat Musa in uh, his invitation, there will be a competition between him and the magicians of the state. The day which was fixed was the day of a national event or a festival, and they were to gather in a huge ground where they would observe a competition between the court magicians and Hazrat Musa Salam. Now, just let me explain what exactly happened. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Hazrat Musa Salam and Hazrat Harun Salam to invite Pharaoh and his nation. This was an extremely, extremely difficult task. It was a life threatening job. It was a trial. But when Hazrat Musa salam, obediently, patiently, relying on the help of Allah, did as he was ordered, then the rule of Allah is what? Inna Allah ma'aswabirin. This came up. And the help of Allah came for him. We can imagine, just imagine that if Hazrat Musa salam, had started inviting people all by himself, walking and knocking door to door, it would have been an extremely slow process with very slow penetration. 
single person on foot with no modern means of communication would have taken a lifetime. But what happened when Allah's help joined him, joined whom? Who was patient, who was obedient, and who relied on his promises. So when Allah's help joined him, all the resources of the king, all the resources of his army and forces were used to invite and motivate the people of Egypt to attend the gathering, their national event. And all the resources were thus used to introduce Hazrat Musa salam, and his miracles to the people of Egypt. This is Allah. This is his power and authority. And this is his help and support with which he blesses whom? Only his patient, obedient bondsmen who are reliant on Allah. Allahumma ja'alna binhum. Verse number 61. Musa alayhi salam said to the magicians summoned by Pharaoh, Woe to you, do not invent a lie against Allah or he will exterminate you with a punishment and he has failed who invents such falsehood. <coughs> the magicians gathered and Hazrat Musa alayhi salam also came up on the decided venue and he addressed them he invited the magicians towards the faith and he suggested them to refrain from the falsehood shows what that we have to invite everyone everywhere under all situations and circumstances and places allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help and guide and support all of us so they disputed over their affairs among themselves and concealed their private conversations. Verse 63, they said, indeed, these two are magicians who want to drive you out of your land with their magic and do away with your most exemplary way. So resolve upon your plan and they come forward in a line and he has succeeded uh, and he has succeeded today who overcomes. They said, O oh Musa, either you throw or we will be the first to throw. Verse 66, he said, rather you throw. And suddenly their ropes and staffs seemed to him from their magic that they were moving like snakes. He sensed with himself apprehension, did Musa. The magicians, they threw and they brought up all their magic. So um, the magicians gathered and uh, this was what? This was the opinion of the team of magicians that they had come up to compete with the miracles of Musa by the order of the king. And they created a magic which was very similar to the miracles of Hazrat Musa Islam they'd heard about. And uh, Hazrat Musa Islam in this verse 67 shows that uh, he was upset and he was tense and uh, this shows what this shows a human instinct and this shows a human feeling proving that prophets were what they were human and uh, then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, consoled him allah said fear not in Eid, it is you who are superior and then in the next verse allah ordered and throw what is in your right hand it will swallow up what they have crafted, what they have crafted is but the trick of a magician and the magician will not succeed wherever, wherever he is. So Allah consoled him and Allah ordered him and uh, the obedience under this condition also. Now Allah ordered him that you stay here. Now in this condition also, the obedience was very difficult and obviously seemed slightly unpractical also but he obeyed and he received the help of Allah. Allah said, throw up. So he threw. This did not seem as a practical solution, but he threw. And then what happened? He succeeded and he was successful. So verse 70. So the magicians fell down in prostration. They said, we have believed in the Lord of Harun and Musa. The prostration was what? It was as an acknowledgement of the supremacy of Hazrat Musa alayhi salam. And in fact, it was a gesture of their respect after accepting the truth of his prophethood. They being magicians themselves, they could very easily figure out that the actual state of what Musa alayhi salam did 
they understood that it was no magic, but this was what? This was true miracles. And then what happened next was that the Pharaoh said, you believed him before I gave you permission? Indeed, he is your leader who has taught you magic. This was the arrogance of the Pharaoh. He thought that nothing could happen without his consent, his order. And that is what his arrogance was. So then he did what? So I will surely cut off your hands and your feet on opposite sides. And I will crucify you on the trunks of palm tree. And you will surely know which of us is more severe in giving punishments and more enduring. Now, after uh, being aggressively uh, annoyed with all of them, Pharaoh labeled them all the magicians whom he himself had gathered. He had gathered them himself, but he had gathered them against Hazrat Musa alayhi salam. And uh, then he started labeling them as Musa alayhi salam's students and said that they had all like teamed up against him. And very obviously, when the magicians accepted the prophethood of Musa Islam in front of the huge gathering of people, it was a matter of disgrace for the Pharaoh. So he started threatening them to crucify them so that he would succeed in reverting them to uh, in front of the whole gathering to uh, for a face saving. And uh, he was actually uh, threatening him so that he would, uh, he would help them to come back. Now what happened next? What did the magicians say? They said, never will we prefer you over what has come to us of clear proofs and over he who has created us. So decree whatever you are to decree, you can only decree for this worldly life. Indeed, we have believed in our Lord that he may forgive us our sins and what you compelled us to do of magic and Allah is better and more enduring. Indeed, whoever comes to his Lord as a criminal Indeed, for him is hell. He will neither die therein nor live. But whoever comes to him as a believer, having done the righteous deeds, for those will be the highest degrees in positions, gardens of perpetual residence beneath which rivers flow, wherever they, wherein they abide eternally. And that is the reward of one who purifies himself. And we inspired to Musa. So now let's revise what happened. Verse number 72 to 76, the magicians had changed at heart their thought process, their fears, their concerns, their desires and wishes, their preferences and priorities had life. They had all transformed. They no longer feared the masters, the rulers of this world, because the fear of the master of masters was now dominant in their hearts. They were not impressed by the worldly rulers, but now they had recognized Al-Malikul Mulk, the sovereign ruler of all the rulers, Allah Almighty. They were not afraid of the trials and hardships of this world, but feared the torments of hellfire. So no amount of threatening, no amount of threats could chain them, could revert them. Their souls had been changed. So this is exactly what these verses explain. Now from verse number 79, 77 to 79, this part of the event will be explained in greater detail in the, in the following chapters. We inspired Musa alayhi salam, travel by the night with my servants and strive for them a dry path through the sea. You will not fear being overtaken by Pharaoh nor be afraid of being of drowning. So Pharaoh pursued them with his soldiers and then covered them and, and, they, and there covered them from the sea, that which covered them. And Pharaoh led his people astray and did not guide them. O children of Israel, we delivered you from your enemy and we made an appointment with you at the right side of the mount. And we sent down to you manna and salwa saying, Eat from the good things with which we have proved you, provided you, and do not transgress or oppress others therein, lest my anger should descend upon you, and he upon whom my anger descends has certainly fallen. 
But indeed, I am the perpetual forgiver of whoever repents and believes. Rabbi ghfir warham wa anta khayru rahimin. Astaghfirullah rabbi min kulli zambin wa atubu alayk. I am the perpetual forgiver of whoever repents. Allahumma ja'alni min al-tawwabina wa ja'alni min al-mutatwakhirin and believes and does righteousness and then continues in guidance. Allahumma ihtina sirat al-mustakeem. Allah said, and what made you hasten from your people, O Musa? What is this? When the followers of Hazrat Musa, السلام, after immigrating to the desert, after they were blessed with freedom and they settled into the desert, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called Hazrat Musa السلام, for his meeting on the Mount of Tur. And this was done and arranged for 40 days. And the purpose was to give him his commandments. And uh, before uh, he arrived on the place, he arrived on Mount Tur before the time, before the ordered time. And there he was asked the reason of his arrival before time. And Hazrat Musa salam, replied, he said, that uh, he answered because he said that I've arrived before time to make you happy. Now, just let's note the manner of Hazrat Musa salam, arriving before time for the meeting of Allah. This was what? For the love of Allah, the intensity of the desire for meeting Allah. Let's ask ourselves, our meeting with our Lord is our Salah. Are we so enthusiastic? about our salah, about our meeting with our Allah. Rabbi Jalli maqim as-salati wa min zurriyati. He said, they are close upon my tracks and I hasten to you, my Lord, that you be pleased. Verse number 85, Allah said, but indeed we have tried your people after you departed and Samri has led them astray. So what was this? How had Samri led his people astray after the departure of Hazrat Musa alayhi salam? And what was the trial? Who was Samri? And how did they lead them astray? Samri was a magician. He was a goldsmith also by profession. He was an opponent of Hazrat Musa alayhi salam. Now, what happened was that when the people of uh, the Bani Israel, they had migrated, they had migrated then the women out of their love of the jewelries and gold, they had carried them with them to the desert. Now, when in the desert, all this golden jewelry, it started seeming useless and worthless, so they dumped it up away. Now, Samri being a goldsmith by trade, he collected all the golden jewelry and he melted up and made a model of a calf, shaping up its mouth like a whistle so that when the air passed through it, it gave a sound like a calf. Now, since the Kipti nation, who they were the masters of the people of Bani Israel, they used to worship the cow. So the people of Bani Israel also had a sanctity of the cow and the calf in their mind. Now, moreover, this calf was made of gold and there was a sound which was emitted like um, a miracle sound also. So all put together, they got trapped up and very cunningly, Samri had them worship the golden calf. So Allah informed Hazrat Musa salam, of what the followers were up to after he had left him. Verse 86, so Musa salam, returned to his people angry and grieved. He said, oh, my people, did your Lord not make you a good promise? Then, then was the time of its fulfillment too long for you? Or did you wish the wrath from your Lord descend upon you? So you bro broke your promise of obedience to me? They said, we did not break our promise to you by our will, but we were made to carry burdens from the ornaments of people of Pharaoh. So we threw them into the fire and thus did Samri throw. And he extracted for them the statue of a calf, which had a lowing sound. And they said, this is our, this is your God and the God of Musa, but he forgot. 
So Hazrat Musa alayhi salam was furious. He took strict notice and accountability of their behavior. And he was like very annoyed with all what they did. Verse 89, did they not see that it could not return to them any speech and that it did not possess for them any harm or benefit? And uh, they, they had, the people of Bani Israel, they had acted so foolishly and to be get trapped to the whole plot. And uh, they had started worshiping the, the, the calf as an idol. And Harun salam, had already told them before the return of Musa salam, oh my people, you are only being tested by it. Indeed, your Lord is the most merciful. So follow me and obey my order. They said, we will never cease being devoted to the calf until Musa salam, returns to us. Musa salam, said, oh Harun, what prevented you when you saw them going astray? So we meet what? That uh, uh, Hazrat Harun, uh, Hazrat Musa alayhi salam, he started his accountability. Now, when he came back, he started his accountability. And who did he start it from? He started it from his own family, his wives, his brother. This is what? This is a model of justice and a fair dealing. Now, he was very angry with Hazrat Harun alayhi salam. And he asked him, what prevented you when you saw them going astray? from following me, then have you disobeyed my order? How strict was his accountability? Hazrat Harun said, O son of my mother, do not seize me by my beard or by my head. Indeed, I feared that you would say you caused division among the children of Israel and you did not observe or await my order. Musa alayhi salam said, and what is your case, O Samri? Now, turning towards um, Samri. So how this all shows what how strict and how firmly he dealt with his brother who had uh, been the observer of the people going astray from the faith of Allah, and then he came up to Sa a Samri and he interrogated Samri also. What did Samri have to say? He said, "I saw." what they did not see. So I took a handful of dust from the track of the messenger and threw it and thus did my soul entice me. How did Samri justify? Samri came up with a very clever justification. He said that it was all the wonderful miracle or the blessing of the, of the handful of dust from the track or from the soil of the footsteps of the prophet. So what was he up to? He was just trying to please Hazrat Musa alayhi salam. He tried to bribe him emotionally by his false praise. But Hazrat Musa alayhi salam was not taken up into the, into the trapping words himself. What did he say? Verse 7, 97, Hazrat Musa alayhi salam said, Then go, and indeed it is decreed for you in this life to say no contact. And indeed you have an appointment in the hereafter you will not fail to keep. And look at your God to which you remained, what? The golden calf, which you remained devoted. We will surely burn it and blow it into the sea with a blast. Now, Samri was exiled and the golden calf was uh, which they were worshiping and they were making partners with Allah was terminated. How? It was burnt. It was burnt to ashes and the ashes were blown. This was done, why? To completely eradicate the minutest forms of polytheism. Remember, this is how strictly and firmly polytheism needs to be uprooted from the society. Because even if a small seed remains, it sprouts and rapidly grows with the efforts of shaitan. So this is how it has to be eradicated from the society. And you know, polytheism comes so secretly that people might not be able to identify it also. As Prophet Wasallam said, polytheism is concealed like a tiny black ant, like a tiny black ant moving on a black stone in a dark night that nothing is visible. A'uzu billahi min ash-shaytani r-rajim. Rabbi a'uzu bika min hamazati shayateen wa a'uzu bika rabbi yahzaruni. 
and your God is only Allah, except for whom there is no deity. He has encompassed all things in knowledge. Thus, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we relate to you from the news of what has preceded. We have certainly given you from us the Quran. Whoever turns from it, then indeed he will, he will bear on the day of resurrection a burden abiding eternally therein, and evil it is for them on the day of resurrection as a load. The day the horn will be blown, and we will gather the criminals that day, blue-eyed. They will murmur among themselves, you remained not but ten days in the world. We are most knowing of what they say when the best of them in manner will say, you remained not but one day. And they ask you about the mountains. So say, my, my Lord will blow them away in a blast. As Allah also says in Quran, jibal, the mountains will be made to move. And then Allah says, manfush. You will see that all the mountains, the mighty mountains will be like what? Will be like fluffed up wool. And he will leave the earth a level plain. You will not see there in a depression or an elevation. The land will be all flat. No person will be missed and no person will be able to hide. That day, everyone will follow the call of the caller with no deviation therefrom, and all the voices will be stilled before the merciful, so you will not hear except a whisper of footsteps. That day, no intercession will benefit except the one to whom the most merciful has given permission and has accepted his words. Allah knows what is presently before them and what will be after them, but they do not encompass in that it in knowledge. Verse 111, and all faces will be humbled before the ever living, the sustainer of existence, and we he will, and he will have failed who carries injustice. Now this verse 111, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has been reported that he said, search for the greatest attribute of Allah, Ismi Azam, the greatest attribute of Allah in the three verses of Quran, the verse of the throne in Surah Baqarah, the verse number two of, uh, of Surah Al-Imran, and the verse 111 of Surah Tawha. And when we search, the words are Al-Hayyul Qayyum, and Prophet Sallallahu added that whoever recites these before making a supplication, his supplication will read the throne of Almighty Allah. And we also know that during the conditions of distress and anxiety, the recitation, the supplication of Prophet Sallallahu used to be what? Ya Hayu Ya Qayyum Bi Rahmatika Nastaris. But he who does of righteous deeds, while he is a believer, he will neither fear in injustice nor deprivation. And thus we have sent it down as an Arabic Quran and have diversified therein the warnings that perhaps they will avoid sin or would cause them remembrance. Verse 114, so high above all is Allah, the sovereign, the truth. And O oh, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, do not hasten with the recitation of Quran before its revelation is completed to you and say, my Lord, increase me in knowledge. Here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching a supplication to his beloved prophet. So it is one of the best supplication to make dua for gaining of knowledge. It shows how important knowledge and seeking knowledge is. And when Prophet Sallallahu was asked to say, Rabbi Zidni Ilma, and ask for help of Allah and the blessings of knowledge, then he has taught us other supplications for knowledge as well. As Prophet Sallallahu said, Allahumma fakihna fiddin. Then another word, Allahumma inni as'aluka ilman nafian, rizqan toyiban, wa amalam mutakabbala. 
and other supplication. Allahumma anfa'ni bima allamtani wa allimni ma yanfa'uni wa zidni ilma. And then the beautiful supplication of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allahumma inni a'uzu bika min ilmin la yanfa'u, min nafsin la tashpa'u, min qalbin la yakshaw, min da'watin la yustajabu lahu. Rabbi zidni ilma. And we had already taken a promise from Adam salam, before he forgot and we found not in him determination and mentioned when we said to the angels prostrate to Adam salam, and they prostrated except Iblis, he refused. So we said, O oh Adam, indeed, this is an enemy to you and your children and your wife. And then let him not remove you from paradise so you would suffer. Indeed, it is promised for you not to be hungry therein or to be unclothed. And indeed, you will not be thirsty therein or be hot from the sun. And then Shaitan. Then Shaitan whispered to him, he said, O oh Adam, shall I direct you to the tree of eternity and position? and position that will not deteriorate and Adam alayhi salam and his wife ate of it and their private parts became apparent to them and they began to fasten over themselves from the leaf of paradise and Adam alayhi salam disobeyed his lord and erred and then his Lord chose him and turned to him in forgiveness and guided him. Allah said, descend from paradise, all your descendants being enemies to one another. And if there should come to you guidance from me, then whoever follows my guidance will neither go astray in the world nor suffer in hereafter. Verse 124, and whoever turns away from my remembrance, indeed, he will have a depressed life and we will gather him on the day of resurrection blind. Now, this verse mentions the punishment of bondsmen staying away from the remembrance of Allah. The remembrance, which is an order of Allah, as Allah has said, Fasquruni Asqurkum. Remember, which is a so remembrance, which is a source of peace and contentment, as Allah says, Allah bezikrillahi tatma'inul qulub. Remembrance, which is like one of the greatest deeds, as Allah says, Wala dhikrullahi akbar. But despite all this, Despite all these excellences of remembrance, those who forget, those who are lazy and stay away from remembrance of Allah, from exalting him, from praising him, is what? There will be hardships in his life. There will be pressures in his life. You must have seen families. We might have come across families loaded with riches, Loaded with riches, with wells, huge mansions, colossal bank balances, hordes of servants and property and authority and power and you name it and they have it. But still, they're sick of life. They're sick of each other. Mother shouting at the children, husband yelling at the wife, siblings daggers drawn, no peace of mind, no contentment, anxieties, tensions, depressions, nervous breakdowns. If you would analyze, you might notice there's no form of remembrance of Allah in the house. No salah, no recitation or correction with Quran, no praising or exalting of Allah. Their life is miserable despite all the luxuries of the world. This is the penalty for lack of remembrance of the merciful of the sustainer. And the punishment hereafter, they will be raised blind. They will be raised blind. And then the reason for the punishment will also be explained. Now read that again. Whoever turns away from my remembrance, indeed, he will have a depressed life and we will gather him on the day of resurrection blind. He will say, my Lord, why? Why have you raised me blind when I was once seeing? Allah will say, thus did our signs come to you and you forgot them? Thus... Will you this day be forgotten? Allahumma la taj'alna minhum. And thus do we recompense he who has transgressed and did not believe in the signs of his Lord and the punishment of hereafter is more severe and more enduring. 
then has it not become clear to them how many generations we destroyed before them as they walked among their dwellings? Indeed, in that are the signs for those of intelligence. And if not, for a word they pre that proceeded from your Lord, punishment would have been an obligation due to image due immediately, and if not, for a specified time decreed. Verse number 130, so be patient over what they say and exalt Allah with praise of your Lord before the rising of the sun and before its setting. And during the periods of the night, exalt him and at the ends of the day that you might be satisfied. To stay patient in obedience of Allah, do what? Remembrance of Allah. Exalt Allah morning and evening. Glorify and praise Allah. Recite the supplications with the Sunnah of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Since remembrance is vital, then one form of Allah and has been taught to all of us. By some scholars, this verse also is a proof of uh, five times Salah in Quran also. And do not extend your eyes towards that by which we have given enjoyment to some categories of them. It is being but the splendor of the worldly life by which we test them and the provision of your Lord. <coughs> And the provision of your Lord is better and more enduring and enjoin prayer upon your family and people and be steadfast therein. We ask you not for provisions, we provide you for, and the best outcome is those of righteous. Verse number 132, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ordering us that just don't offer salah, just don't establish salah by yourself. Order and ensure the establishment of salah by your family members also, by those who are dependent on you, those who are under your control or under your influence or your subordinates. Remember, the establishing of salah is the fear of the establishing of salah of all those around us also. As Prophet Sallallahu has said about the head of the family, that the head of the family is in charge. Prophet Sallallahu said, you are all in charge. The husband is in charge of his family and he will be asked about it. The wife is in charge in the absence of her husband and she will be interrogated about her family. The one interrogation about Salah will be the Salah of the children. Remember, before adult, adulthood, the parents will be held accountable. But after adulthood, only the person himself will be held accountable. But the children whose parents, they train them to establish Salah, then their Salah after adulthood will be a source of reward for the parents also. And they say, why does he not bring us a sign from his Lord? Has there not come to them evidence of what was in the form of scriptures? And if he had destroyed them with a the punishment before him, they would have said, our Lord, why did you not send to us a messenger so we could have followed your verses before we were humiliated and disgraced say each of us is waiting so wait for you will know who are the companions of the sound path and who is guided Allahumma ja'alna minhum, Allahumma ikhdina sirat al-mustaqeem, Allahumma alhimna rushdan wa aizza min shuroori anfusina, ya muqallib al-qulubi sabbit qalbi ala dinik, ya musarrif al-qulubi sarrif qalbi ala tu'atik.